right, let's go. All right, here we go. Already. Okay, here we go. Binomial distribution um, is one that dot point area study four, dot point two hyphen three. Um, in terms of notation, this is, this is something nice to see. You've got bi, which stands for binomial. So when you're in an exam, this is actually nice to write out. Uh, you normally do x distributed, which is that little line that looks like this, so you have x distributed by binomial, and then np. I'll describe what np is, but that's another way of saying your approach. So you know like with uh, calculus, if you were to say you're using product rule, you use the product rule approach. Uh, this is your one mark notation to say that you know it's binomial, you're using binomial distribution. Okay, and same thing for normal, you would have your own way on notation for normal distribution as well. Okay, so that's the notation over here. Um, and again, it is an example, I want you to pay attention, it is an example of the discrete random variable. So we understand what discrete random variable is, you are now doing an example of that. Okay, so it's a branch of that. But it follows the same theories. Expected value, variance, and standard deviation still follow the same concepts. Okay? So, oh, just to remind you, I'm going to talk about Bernoulli trials. Okay? Now, to start off, binomial distribution. It is an example of probability distribution for a discrete random variable. Meaning, just in case if you read that and it doesn't make sense to you, it just means that the data that we're using here is classified as discrete. That's it. Okay, so the data that we're using in order to portray our probability for you to visualize it, our probability distribution just means I'm going to draw a graph of all the probabilities and these probabilities or the data that you're getting is discrete. That's all it means. Okay. Second part, binomial uh, distribution specifically is used when there are two possible outcomes. And that's literally the key for binomial. That's how you pick it out whether it's binomial or not. Okay, so bi, which means two, that's generally where it comes out from. So two outcomes. One, when would you use something such as a discrete data where it's countable, because remember discrete means it's countable data, and you have two outcomes. It would be something like heads and tails. You either get heads or you don't. Okay, so that's only two outcomes. You either get it or you don't. Maybe if you vote for Malcolm Turnbull or you don't. Maybe you succeed or you fail. Maybe you get a green seat or you don't in this sort of like just the other here, it's either green or it's gray. It's only two outcomes. Okay? Now, because it's two outcomes, this also leads on to the other idea, which is Bernoulli, but we'll get to that soon. Binomial distribution relies on what we call Bernoulli sequence to draw out the data or to calculate your probability. Because of this idea, the idea that there's only two outcomes. Now, what is Bernoulli sequence, or like what is that theory? Bernoulli sequence is a name used to describe a sequence of repeated trials with the following properties. So it just means every time you find a probability, test it. True, like flipping a coin. That's a trial. You flip a coin once, flip a coin twice, flip a coin three times. Whatever the results are, so you get heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, that is what a Bernoulli sequence is describing. It's describing that it's a sequence of repeated trials. Okay, but it has these following properties. Why is flipping a coin considered a Bernoulli sequence? Because, number one, each trial results in two outcomes. So flipping a coin, you've got heads and tails. Fair call. That makes sense. You've got two outcomes. You either get heads or you get tails. The probability of success on a single trial is constant for all trials. All that is saying is just the probability of what you're looking for. So if I'm looking for the chance of getting tails, is 0.5, 50%. Doesn't matter how many times I flip that coin, every trial, it is the same. The probability of getting tails is the same. Doesn't change. Okay, I flip on the first go, or flip on the fifth go, or the 10th go, the probability of getting tails is still 
So that's what this part is saying. So success, normally when they say success, it's normally what you're looking for. So if I'm looking for uh, raining in a week, okay, so I'll be looking out in seven days, how many times in those seven days does it rain? Okay, that's my success. I know success is a bit contradictory in that sense, but the idea is what you're looking for. I want to know how many times it rains. Now, if it rains all seven times, I'd say my success is seven times. Okay, if I rain three days, then it'll be 103. So my success is what I want, and my failure is what not what I don't want. Okay, so if it's a sunny day, that's not what I want. All right, so probability of success just means the chance of what you're looking for, specifically what you want, uh, stays consistent throughout the trials. And then lastly, that also implies that it is independent. Now, if you remember what I mentioned about conditional probability, conditional probability relies on the probability of before. So if you remember the example I gave you, I said if I'm walking along a street and there's a stick and I trip over it, the chance of me tripping over it again is very unlikely because it, it relied on the facts before. But if I went through the same strip of street and I keep tripping over that stick, it means that it doesn't matter how many times I tripped over it before, it doesn't matter. It's independent. So what is a Bernoulli sequence? It follows this idea that every time you do a trial, the probability is the same. But the probability of this uh, event happening does not require the probability of the event before. It doesn't matter. It's independent. Not only that, there are only two outcomes. That's what a Bernoulli sequence is. Okay? Yes, Roberto? So the second and third dot point are the same thing? Um, sort of. We're being more specific in the sense we're saying independent. You can have consistent probability, um, but it doesn't mean it's independent. It could just mean that the problem, like if I gave you a condition, if I said the probability of me tripping over the stick now is 0.5, and the probability of me tripping over the stick again, given that I had tripped over it again, is 0.5, that's still conditional. See, but the, the probability is 50%, 50%, 50%. So it seems like it's independent, but it's not. It's based on the condition. Um, and therefore, uh, that third dot point is technically separate from that. It's the fact that it has to be independent, and the probability is consistent throughout. Okay? So that's what a Bernoulli sequence is. Now let's take an example, just to re uh, reiterate what I'm trying to say here. That's Bernoulli, by the way. Now, suppose that a netball player has a probability of 1 over 3, so one third of a chance of scoring a goal, each time she attempts to goal. Okay? She repeatedly has shots for goals, so she keeps shooting. So the chance of her success, and in this case we're talking about success meaning that she wants to get a score. So you would say the success means that there are two outcomes. She either gets it, or she doesn't. Chances of getting it, is one third. That means the chance of her not getting it is two thirds. That means each trial has two outcomes. That satisfies the first condition. The second one is says the probability of scoring a goal, which I just said, is either one third or two thirds. And this is going to be consistent throughout. Every time she shoots for a goal, she's going to have a one third chance of getting it in or two thirds chance of failing. So the probability is consistent for every trial. So that's dot point number two. That it stays consistent. The probability of success and failure are consistent. Number three, it doesn't say anywhere in the question that the chance of her shooting in the next goal is dependent on anything before. So therefore, they are independent. Every shot that she takes is independent. Every shot that she shoots is still one third, one third chance of getting it in. So therefore, yes, this would be an example of a Bernoulli sequence, and hence you can also use binomial to distribute her data. Okay? So that's what Bernoulli sequence is. Now, let's imagine this. Rolling a dice. Let's say that we're looking at how many threes we get in on our trials. Okay, so every time I roll a dice, I want to see how many threes. So that is my success. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. How many threes do I get? Okay? Let's say we roll the dice three times. Okay, now this is without any knowledge of um, binomial distribution of Bernoulli sequences. What you would have done is you would have said, okay, I'm going to roll it three times and I want to list out the sample space of how many times do I get my threes. This is what it will look like. 
let's say the t and n's, let's let t be the event you see in 3. So how many times you see in 3? Okay, so for the first one, I'm saying that I will get out of 3 rolls, I'm going to get a 3, 3, 3. So 3's happen all 3 times. In this example here, ttn just means I'm going to get a 3, 3, and then not a 3. I could also get, get a 3, not a 3, and then a 3. I can get a not a 3, and a 3, and a 3. Okay, so I'm listing out all my possible outcomes at this point on how many times I can get a 3, or I don't get a 3. Okay, this is different to how you did discrete at the start, where you would have listed out chances of getting 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. Okay, you would have listed out all your sample space. We're not looking at that. We're looking at two outcomes. We're looking at either we're getting a 3, or we don't get a 3. Okay, that's all my possibilities of getting a 3. Oh, no, I'm not getting a 3. It's so 3 by 2 by 1. Yeah. Which is um, uh, 3 by 3, sorry. Uh, so that's why you get uh, this example here. You get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible options. Now, if I asked you to just list down, let's say x is the number of 3s you get. In the first scenario, you've got TTT, -T -T, that means you've got 3 success. So we called Getting a 3 is a success. How many successes do we get in this 3 rolls, or 3 times that we trialled? You get 3 for the first one. You get 2 success for each of these examples here. And then you get 1, 3 for every of these examples here, and you get 0 for this one. In that case, then, if I asked you to find the probability of getting 3, three threes. Okay, then you would say that the chance of getting a 3 is 1 out of 6. That's a probability of success. So I'd say probability of success is, one third, I mean, 1 6. And that is, success just means getting a 3. So then if I asked you, what's the chance of you not getting a 3 then? What would you tell me? 5 1 6. So the probability of failure, so the only two outcomes here, you either get a 3, 1, 6, or you don't get a 3, 5, 6, okay? So therefore, to answer the question here, I'm saying, well, that means I'm going to get 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3 on all three trials. It makes sense. 1, 6, times 1, 6, times 1, 6. Or another way of thinking about it is, if I drew a tree diagram just to make it sense for you, why you have eight outcomes, is you're saying get a 3 or don't get a 3. Get a 3 or don't get a 3. Get a 3, or don't get a 3. Why do you have 8 sample spaces? Because it makes sense. You've got 2 groups of 2 groups of 2 groups. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Makes sense. And that's what we said, that binomial distribution requires Bernoulli sequence. There's only two outcomes. You only get a 3 or you don't. So this is 1, 6, 5, 6. Therefore, what we're looking for is getting a 3, getting a 3, getting a 3, so it's 1, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6, which is what this is saying. Okay? So, this is without using any understanding of Bernoulli sequence. So I'm just using simple mathematics that you would have learned in year 10 or 11. Yeah? So you would have filled it all out, the chances of getting 3 first, 3 second, and then not a 3 it would have been 1, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 5, 1, 6. So, if you had to work out the probability of you getting three success, meaning three threes, you would tell me that it's one six times one six times one six. Cool. Whereas the chances of you getting two threes, you would find the probability of each one of these and add them all together. That tells you the chances of getting all two threes, or one three, or no threes at all. Now, this is what they would have wrote here. This is, if you notice, another way of writing 1, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6 is 1, 6 to the power 3. Whereas this one, this is the same thing as saying 1, 6 to the power 2 times chance of failure. 5, 6. Same thing here. This is 1, 6 times 1, 6 is 1, 6 to the power 2. Where's that 3 come from? That 3 told me that there are 3 of which out of your sample space, there's only three of them that occurs the same way. Same thing here. This is 5, 6 times 5, 6, so it's 5, 6 squared times 1, 6. The so probability of success, probability of failure. This is the number of 
uh, possible outcomes that you have, such that you've got two values and one success. And then finally at the end, you can see that this is just probability of failure in all three cases, which makes sense that it's five out of six cubed. If you actually work it out, uh, the answer to it, this is the distribution. This is what you would have done. You would have said x is the number of success of you getting threes. You either get zero threes, one three, two threes, or three threes. The probability which we calculate one six to the power of three is this. I mean, sorry, is this. And then one, and then two, and then three. This distribution that I've just got up here for you, zero, one, two, three, and then your probabilities on the bottom, they all should add up to one. The square probability and all the probabilities should equal one. This is what we call binomial probability distribution. So if you had to sketch this, if you did x, where x is the probability of you, uh, x is the variable of how many times you get your success, it would have said zero, one, two, three, and then you write down your probabilities, which is all the way up to one. And you sketch it. Okay? And it will be in a dot, which is in the next exercise, we're going to look at the graphs for your binomial. Okay? But this is what the binomial distribution is. It just literally will see how many repetitions there are. Now, the nice thing about this specifically is right here. You should notice there's a pattern here. And this is why the formula comes down. I'm showing you where the formula comes from rather than just memorize it. Okay? Right here, you can see that that's probability of success. Probability of success, probability of failure, probability of success, probability of failure. There's a pattern here. Because Bernoulli sequences says that they all have to be consistent, that means you have to have probability of success. And you have to also have probability of failure. That's the first part of the formula. The next part is, where is this three? What's another way of finding out these threes? So there had to be a way. Now last year, in unit one and two, uh, I believe in specialists, not only in methods course, but you would have in specialists, that these threes is just really the selection, it's a selection of combinations. You can remember permutations, combinations. This is just saying, out of your three, out of your three selection or three possible outcomes, how many different ways can I have two threes? Or out of my three selections, my total threes, how many times can I get one three? So out of my total three options, how many times can I get one three? How many times do I get zero threes? And just a reminder, if you've forgotten your combinations, it was NCR, okay, C for combinations, N for the total number of options that you have, R being the selected options you want. This is how we write it. We write N being the total number of options you have. In our case, it's three. You only got three options. You only get three, three, threes. Well, you don't. Okay, so there's only three options. And out of it, how many threes do we want? Either one, zero, two, or all three. Okay. This is the formula for it. If you forgot what the exclamation marks mean, it means a factorial. Factorial means, if it's three factorial, it means three times two times one. Okay. So let's take our example over here. We said that out of three, we want two of them two out of those options to be threes or success. So that means out of my total, I've got three, I want two success. If I write it out, put into this formula, it's three factorial over two factorial times three minus one, two factorial. This works out to be three times two times one, which is three factorial. Two times one, which is two factorial. Times three minus two factorial, which is one factorial, which is one. So if I do that, you can see 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 divided by 1, and that's just 3 over 1, which makes it 3, which comes out from here, right there. So why do we want to know that? Because now, that tells me something. There's a pattern here. If you want to find how many success you have, given that you know the number of possible options you have, the number of trials you have, you can actually write a formula out now. You can use the number of combinations, how many times it repeats itself, how many different ways you can get it, times the probability of success, which is here, success, times the probability of failure. This is what they did. So they're saying, 
Alright, for the first one, if I had to write it all out, let's spill it out for you. This is just saying, I could say that it was 1 out of 6 cubed, but really, this is just saying a total of 3. How many success do I want? I want 3 of them. All 3 of them I want to be successful, so what's the chance of this happening? Okay. So what's, what's the, how many different ways can I write that? And there's only one way to write that. And there's only one way out of those three options to get three, three, three. Yeah? Then you've got your probability of success. Well, I want, notice that it's one six cubed because it's one six times one six times one six. So it makes sense that it will be the number of success that you want is the number of success or probability to the power of the number of success you want. Your failure, you wanted zero. That's why 5 out of 6 to the 0 is 1. That's why you don't see it in the first line. If you compare it to the second line now, same thing. Out of 3, I want to select 2, which makes sense. This ends up being 3. And 1 6 squared, because I said I want only 2 success, which makes sense. If I only want 2, I get 2 success, which makes sense. This is squared. Now, where did you get the 1 from? Well, out of three, if you've got two of them that is success, then obviously one is failure. So obviously how you get that would have been the total minus what you're looking for. So total is three minus how many you want. That's why you get one. So if you follow the same idea for the next one, you want one success. So out of three, you want one success. Probability of success is one. Probability of failure is two. And that's exactly what we have here. And then finally, the last one, you would have guessed that it's 3 and 0. So you want 0 success, and that means that the probability of success is 0. You don't want any of them. Therefore, 5 out of 6, you want all 3 of them. And it ends up being this. So, if I had to write it out as a formula for you, this is where the formula comes from. The probability, this is binomial distribution. To find your probabilities, if you know it has two outcomes and it follows a Bernoulli sequence, you can say it is your combinations times the probability of success to the power of how many times you want that success to occur times the probability of failure and how many times you want that failure to occur. And that will give you a probability, which is the distribution up here. 0, 1, 2, and 3. And that is binomial. Why is it discrete? Because every data that I'm talking about right now is discrete. It's all countable. Distribution is just you drawing out the probability. What's so specific about binomial? It has two outcomes. That's the key. As soon as you see that there's two possible outcomes, you know it's binomial. Okay? So take that, take some time to sink that in. The theory is very simple. That's the only one concept. And then when you use this to find expected value, variance, standard deviation, exactly the same way. No difference. If you know, if you've got to table right now, you can find out the expected value. You don't need me to tell you how to do it. You know how to do it. Okay? Uh, yes, Rebecca? Uh, what was the point of calculating the number of combinations before? Using the other formula? As in, like here? Yeah. No, 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 the formula you used before. So, this one? Yeah, what was the point of that? That, that tells you how many times you're going to get two. Because there's different ways of writing two success and a failure. Oh. And so you want to know how many times there are, how many different ways can you write three and two success. So that's what this is for, it's number of combinations. Yeah? So it's like um, magical seats, or musical seats, sorry. It's how many different ways you can... Magical seats? What's it called again? Musical seats. Chairs. Musical chairs. How many different ways you can move those chairs around, how many people can sit in different seats. So there are five seats, one, two, three, four. Five seats. The question is, how many different ways can I rearrange this? So I could have A, B, C, D, E. How many different ways can I rearrange A, B, C, D, E? Yeah. Okay. What's the N? Then? What's the N? N is the total number of so. So in this case, we would have five. You've got five different objects to rearrange. Yeah. And uh, the R is how many of those do you want to look for? So if I wanted, um, let's say, let's say male and females in five seats, let's say there are ten males. How many different ways can I choose five seats such that I've got two males and the rest is three females? How many different ways can I do that? 
how many times when that happened. Then you can work out the probability from that. Yeah? Okay. So, now that we've got the formula, that all leads to that. Okay, so this is your from your textbook that would have gave you this formula. Yes, I could have started off by giving you this and gave you the example. And yes, you would have been able to do it, but then you lose the idea of why Bernoulli sequence is important, how you identify it, and how it links to just discrete probability. Because you don't need this formula to solve it. You could have done it without it. I could easily have asked you, and you would have been able to do it anyway drawing a tree diagram. Okay? But this helps you to avoid using a tree diagram. Can tree diagram guys work? It's just that this would have been a quicker way of doing it. That's all. Right? Now let's say example two. Let's have a go with this one. I want you to write out the formula that you once you understand this now, talking about what's the probability of success, what's the probability of failure, what are you looking for? And if you have a calculator, work out the answer, otherwise just write out the working solution, how do you do this? So you've got find the probability of obtaining exactly three heads when a fair coin is tossed seven times. Okay, so you've got a fair coin, you're going to flip it seven times. What's the chances of you getting exactly three? Okay, correct the four decimal places. So figure it out. What is your N? What is your R? What is the probability of success? What's your failure? How would you work this out? I don't need you to solve it on the I don't need you to solve it on the calculator yet if you don't know how to use a calculator to get NCR. Um, but I do need the line, the working solution to be correct. Hopefully you figured out, success is obtaining H, that's your goal. Remember there's two outcomes, as soon as you can see two outcomes, you either get it or you don't. In our case we're getting H from a fair coin. So that means failure is not getting H on a fair coin. So you've got two outcomes down. What's the chances of getting H? 0.5, you know the chances of getting tails is 0.5 as well. So, we are now looking for, what's the chances of getting three H's? That's our goal. How many trials am I doing? Seven. So, if I list it out, you should have left it as seven trials out of the seven. I want only three of them to be exactly three. I want them three to be heads. And I want the rest to be tails. So this is what I'm saying here. Heads, three of them. Tails, four of them. That makes sense. This will tell me the total possible number of total time Total number of possible ways to have three heads and then four tails. How many different ways can you write it? Seven combination R or seven combination three just means how many times can you write that? How many different ways can you write that? Okay? So I need to calculate if you don't know how to do it. If you at least got this step, wait, hands up if you got this step. Okay, good. Excellent. I want more next time. Okay? So, how do you do on your calculator? You can actually type NCR or you can actually go to menu, okay? When you go to menu, it says probability, because we're obviously in probability. And then you'll see number three, which is combinations. Okay, so menu, probability, and combinations, you get that NCR. Notice I put seven first, because it's N. Seven comes first, N. R, which is three. 0.5 is my probability of success, two power three. And then 0.5 is my probability of failure. Probability of failure to the power of four. Alternatively, you can also go through probability, which is number five, 
And instead of going to combinations, which is how you get NCR, you can go to distributions and scroll down to the letter D or press the letter D and it says binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Now as a note, which I wrote in the PowerPoint, what is PDF and CDF? PDF is used for one instance. So in our case, probability of x equals three, that's one instance. Probability of x equals one, that's one instance. CDF on the other hand is for an interval. So if you wanted to know the chances of getting less than or equal to three heads, then that would be CDF, because it will calculate for you probability zero, one, two, and three, and it adds it all up for you together. Okay, that's what CDF does. So if you did actually go through the tentative method binomial PDF, this is what it will look like. It'll come up with this page. PDF, it tells number of trials. I know I did seven. Probability of success? Well, you know it's 0.5, that's the chance of you getting heads. X being how many of these success do you want? I want three. I want H, H, H. And it will calculate it for you, so if you do it, see the answer is exactly the same. Or you can type this out too. You can type out when you calculate binomial PDF. 7 for your n. 0.5 is your probability. 3 is your x. How many times do you want it to occur? Or r if you want to think about it. Okay, so you've got n, p, r. If that's uh, another way to do it. So that's a new calculator. Okay. Now, that's pretty much what binomial distribution is. Let's now do an exam question. Okay, so VCAR 2007. About 26% of students who got this correct, which is funny, because it shouldn't be. It's a very easy question. Um, I think the only part that got interesting is maybe the intervals. I think that might have been where the students found a struggle with that. But have a go with this one. You got about five minutes. Let's go. And it's easier because I already told you this is binomial. Think about it. What is your success? What is your failure? What's your N? What are you testing? What's your trials? How's it being repeated? And then what are you looking for? And what you're looking for is generally the hint of what your success is. What are you looking for? In our case, it says, what is the probability that more than two of these customers order coffee? More than two order coffee. That's a big hint, what your success is.
<laughs> yes, sir. Let's have a look at the answers. All right, here we go. Hopefully, you picked out that the keyword here was more than two, so therefore you don't include two. More than two what? Customers. How many customers came in? Four. So obviously you knew, you should have known that N equals four, and out of the four, you want more than two. So you either have three or four which is what they're doing here. Probability of three customers plus probability of four customers. So it's more than two, that's the key part. And then they told you the chances of the customers buying a cup of coffee, probability of success is 0.5. So you can already write out the binary distribution here as out of four, you want three success, 0.5 to the power of three, that's one failure. And then if you looked at probability of four, this is just written short, but it would have been four, four, half, zero, half, four. Which actually this is one, and that's one. That's why it's half to the power of four. And you work that out, four and 16 plus one is 16. Five out of 16, hands up if you got that correct. Hands up if you didn't get that correct. Okay, not many. Hands up if you didn't know what to do. Okay, hopefully we learn. Okay, but here we go. In terms of probability, 26% got it all correct, 26.0. Uh, and mainly it's because you either tree draw a tree diagram or whatnot, but I do want you to focus on this when you walk out. Okay, that n factorial. is equal to n if you didn't know, okay? And same thing with n, c, n equals 1. Think about that, all right? But there you go. Thank you. Practice. See you next session.
Three customers, one each. And four, four. And then four, four. So class them together, like this. Oh. Okay, thank you. Oh, top. Mm -hmm. so, uh, session one, that's it. Uh, I remember it. I was busy in the morning, so that's good. Um, sure, I'll school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, quick. Alright, um, okay. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, uh, shit, no way. The most helpful feedback you can get uh, from the app is when it's on the screen. 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 Should I use this one? Yeah, this one. I always do that thing. Yeah, yeah. So the fire removal sheets, the assignments, and the test that is more than you have any ready for. Yeah, I know, I know. 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 I so you've got the other interaction test, and then you take all those four reserve based skills, and apply that into the final vision sheets, which are the things that are the guys. Did you guys find Pokemon or something? Huh? Did you guys find Pokemon or something? No. Did you guys see Emily and Nikki? I don't know how they do it, but you guys are crazy. He didn't go in, he stayed making sure that we went. At the start. Oh yeah, you should go in here. Yeah, that's why I was like, what are you looking at? And then I'm like, oh, I'm turn around and I'm like, okay. I'll just, not, oh, I don't care. So you won't look at me. There's Emily and Mizuki. What's wrong with them? I'll ask her. I'll tell you. I don't want to ask her. Because I reckon she's going to be like, hey, I was just doing this. Da, 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 da. Oh, I had enough of her. Most of my time. <laughs>
So what okay. I'll do is I'll um, do a little bit of recap first about the formula of perimeter and square. Great. Um, perimeter, perimeter, what? Perimeter area on rectangle and square. And I'll let them do like see if they can use the formula to calculate the area. So mm -hmm. I'll just do a quick example and let sure. them calculate area and perimeter. And after that will be um, area of triangle mm. so um, we have a right angle triangle uh, base height base height and a normal triangle mm. and this will be height so two I'll, I have to put this on the PowerPoint as well mm -hmm. and some examples mm. um, I, I'll also emphasize on the format of um, being um, you write the what is it